Thank you very much. Let's have another big hand for Mr. Din's class. I want to thank them very much for coming out and just giving us a little glimpse at you know the inquiry, the research, all of the things that go into a successful science program at a school. Uh, it's really tremendous to see. So thank you, uh, ladies and gents, for joining us. Now for these ladies and gents, I'm going to uh, give our friends from the California Credit Union just a couple of minutes to say uh, a couple of things here as we transition over into our presentation, and then we will go ahead and get started. So I want to present to you Gloria Rogers from the California Credit Union, one of our very good friends and partners who always helps us out. So Gloria? Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gloria Rogers. I'm here representing California Credit Union. Anybody familiar with California Credit Union? Anybody? Oh, I think there's a few hands. Um, California Credit Union is formerly a Los Angeles Teachers Credit Union. We were founded by an LUSD teacher back in 1933. Uh, we have a, a great relationship with LUSD, the HR department, just with LUSD overall, because we were founded by an LUSD teacher. Um, our grassroots, excuse me, grassroots started with LUSD, so you'll see us at several events within LUSD. Um, but we support education throughout the state of California. Um, you do not have to be with LUSD, but we do support education again throughout California. Uh, you'll see us a lot of the events and so forth. Um, one of the reasons why California Credit Union supports LUSD is that we have special products and services for school employees. So if you're with LUSD or any other education uh, organization in the state of California, you can join um, the credit union and take advantage of the services that we have to offer. Um, anybody can technically join California Credit Union, but when you are a school employee, um, with some of the benefits that we have to offer is a summer savings program. So whether you're a 9, 10, 11, or 12-month employee, we try to help you save for the summer at a 3% yield. A traditional savings account usually is 0 0.05. So with, as being a, a school employee, we give you a benefit for having a 3% yield on a savings account, and it works through your payroll deduction. Uh, we work closely with LUSD, so we have all the forms for LUSD, so if you're looking to save, you could save every um, you know, $50 a month, up to $2,000 a month to go into this savings account to help you save during the summer. And then everything that you have in July, the, your savings plus the interest that you've earned, we transfer to your checking account or savings account. Um, that way you could use it to pay your bills or you know, go on your vacation or do whatever you, uh, you, you, know, you need to do with the money. Another benefit we offer for school employees is a 0% gear up and classroom loan. It's a loan at 0% interest. You will never hear that at a, at a big bank. We don't charge anything for this loan. So it's $500 for you to use um, because we understand school employees, a lot of times as teachers, you are sometimes have to pay out of pocket to do special projects, to decorate the classroom. Um, if you're looking to purchase a laptop, um, if you're a classified employee, uh, you know sometimes you have to have uniforms and so forth. We don't ask for receipts, so what you use of $500 is, is, is up to you. Uh, but what we do is we transfer $500 into your checking account, and you pay it off for the course of 12 months, and you're done. It's about $41 a month that you pay it back. Again, there's no interest. There's no fees associated with it. So it's $500 available to you once a year. I've heard some um, uh, school employees say, oh, this is a great uh, uh, loan. They use it during the holidays, you know, so if they're instead of putting on the credit card or whatever, so it's like, okay, that's great, you know, if they're using it in the classroom or for their personal use. At the end of the day, we're here to help you because we understand sometimes the pay cycles with school employees uh, could be a little bit challenging. Um, other things uh, that we offer for school employees as a benefit is a mortgage discount. Um, right now, we're looking at mortgage rates, or they've been increasing, so if you're looking to purchasing a home, a 30-year loan is about a five and a quarter. When you're a school employee, we give you 25 basis points off of the rate, so you would get it at 5%. So that's something uh, to really uh, think about uh, as a benefit and a resource uh, when you're a school employee. In addition, if you're looking for debt consolidation, personal loans and so forth, home equity line of credits, credit cards, uh, we even offer business accounts. Um, but we're here to service you, and we just want to make sure that you know that California Credit Union is a resource, um, and we're here to support you through your journey. And I just want to say thank you for looking and considering to be becoming a math and science teacher. I think it's you know being a teacher is in such a noble profession. Uh, being an educator, period, whether you're a, a you know certificate or classified employee, is, is so important. But looking to becoming a teacher, science and math is amazing. Those are two subjects I love. They're difficult, but I love math. Uh, science was ch challenging, but you know I, I I did okay at the end of the day. Um, but I just want to say thank you, and I do have my table in, in the, right over in the corner. If you guys have any questions, if there's anything I can help you with, with uh, finances and so forth, um, it's so important to be uh, financially healthy so you can move forward in, in your path. 
Um, so thank you once again. And I, let me be the first to say happy holidays if no one has told you. So thank you. I know we're in November. <laughs> Thank you, Gloria. It's getting earlier and earlier every year, the holidays, aren't they? Oh, my Lord. Well, let's go ahead and throw that back up there. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, sitting through the preamble here to our presentation. We're going to hopefully make this part of the presentation relatively short so that you can do what you need to do in terms of talking to some of our friends from our local university partners today. Uh, we're going to talk today about why we need math and science teachers. We're gonna talk about some of the ways that you can become a teacher, some of the ways that, uh, some of the things that you're gonna to need to do to become a teacher in Los Angeles Unified, and then we'll be glad to take a few questions there at the end as well, some general questions. Let me also start off, it occurs to me that I never introduced myself. My name is Brian Johnson, and I am the Director of Certificated Workforce Management at LAUSD. And it's a really fancy way of saying that I'm in charge of teacher recruitment. In LAUSD, we employ about 30,000 certificated employees. That's teachers, counselors, related services providers, and administrators. We hire about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 teachers every year, and we're always hiring math and science teachers. Every year, we hire somewhere between 50 and 80 science teachers and between 50 and 80 mathematics teachers. And this is becoming a tremendous area of need. And I'm going to talk to you just very quickly about the need for math and science teachers. And I was a history teacher, so I have to talk about things in economic terms. And so I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about supply and demand. So over the course of the last few years, the uh, universities in California are, are not producing enough credentialed teachers in both math and science. This is the lower part, what we'll call the supply, if this works correctly, there we go in order to meet the number of teachers that we need to hire every year statewide or the demand. And this is where you, ladies and gentlemen, come in. Because generally speaking, becoming a teacher can be a little bit challenging. There's a lot of things that you need to do to become a teacher. And in just a moment, I'm gonna turn the mic over to my good friend and colleague, Jacob Guthrie, our assistant director, who's going to speak to you about the pathways to becoming a teacher. But because we are seeing this increased need and the supply is not there to meet it, there are a lot of opportunities for people who do not yet hold a teaching credential to be able to teach. When I came into the teaching profession, I was a social science teacher and I came in during the time when we were hiring people hand over fist and so there was opportunities. I came in as an intern, which means I was not yet fully certified to become a teacher. In fact, I hadn't even started my uh, credentialing program until after I started working. And so there's lots of different ways to become a teacher. And so with that in mind, I'm going to turn the mic over to Jacob Guthrie, our assistant director, to walk you through some of those pathways to becoming a teacher. All right. Well, good afternoon. It's always wonderful to uh, talk to some folks who are interested in math and science. I uh, taught math for 10 years, so it's something that's exciting to me. And if you saw the wonderful students, that we had a chance to hear from earlier, that's the reason why it's so fantastic, right? Like great energy, excited about learning. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the way that you can become a teacher. How can you become credentialed so that you're able to teach students in California? So the first thing that any teacher needs is a bachelor's degree. You have to have a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited university. The next thing that you need is you need to meet the basic skills requirement. That can be met in a number of ways. Most of us meet that by passing the CBEST exam. There are also ways to meet that requirement if you have a qualifying score on the SAT, on uh, AP exams, uh, through the ACT, Cal State University entrance exams. There's a, a variety of ways to meet that, um, but that's the basic skills exam that any teacher has to take regardless of subject area. Uh, that once you have that, there's a possibility that you may be able to qualify as a provisional teacher. That's a teacher who is not yet enrolled in a credentialing program. And you can sometimes do that if you have enough coursework in the area that you wish to teach. So say, for example, I were a mathematics major or a chemistry major, I may be able to teach in that subject area as a provisionally licensed teacher if I have a bachelor's degree and the CBEST. And if you had your transcripts, 
we would be happy to look them over and see if you might qualify for that. Because in certain areas, like if anyone here is a physics major, we want to talk to you because you may already qualify for that. Um, after that, the CSET is the subject matter exam. So that's the exam that tests you to make sure that you have the subject matter knowledge in the area that you're interested in teaching. So once you have a bachelor's, the CBES, and the CSET, then you're ready to go into a credentialing program. And when you get there, there are two routes. So Dr. Johnson previously referred to interns. Those are folks that are taking the coursework at the same time that they're teaching. So you're in the classroom, you're getting paid a salary, you're earning benefits, and then during the evenings, you're taking coursework to earn your credential. So you're teaching and taking the classes at the same time to then earn your credential. The traditional method is for folks who have a uh, supervising master teacher. And so what you're doing is you are gradually uh, taking over a, a credential teacher's class while you're taking coursework until you earn a credential. You're not getting paid, but a lot of people like that route because you don't have to be the one responsible as a teacher of record right away. And depending on your individual situation, maybe intern is a, a better route for you. You need to have a job and you feel like you're ready. Uh, for some folks, they feel that the traditional route is, is better for them. And all of our university partners offer both routes. And once you have completed either an intern program or a traditional program, then at that point you would earn what's called a preliminary credential. And that allows you to teach in your content area as a fully certified teacher. All right, and then we just wanted to spend a little time talking about the benefits of working for LA Unified. Uh, everyone, a, a lot of the staff members that you've interacted with today, they are, are part of a wonderful LUSD family and it's a great place to be for a number of reasons. So first, we talk about financial benefits. Um, we have included some salary tables in your folder that you'll be able to look at. There are different salary tables. One is for folks who are on alternative certification and the other one is for folks who are fully credentialed. So interns, you'd be on the alternative salary table. Um, but what you'll notice when you look there is there's a lot of opportunities for, for growth in terms of your salary. Your salary is uh, dependent upon years of experience and number of units that you have beyond your bachelor's degree. We are one of the only employers in the state that still offer fully paid benefits for you and your dependents at this time. So what that means is that there's currently no payroll deduction for your medical, uh, your dental, or your vision uh, for you or any of your dependents. And that's worth more than $16,000 a year and it's increasing. So we do invest in our employees in that way in a very serious way. Uh, you're able to participate in the state teacher retirement system. Um, and then we also offer basic life insurance and supplemental life insurance plans as well. In terms of career, uh, career benefits, since we're such a large district, there are opportunities for you to do more than stay in your initial classroom. Okay, so we have a number of offices and a number of support roles. We have internal pipelines to invest in you as teacher leaders or folks who want to become administrators. And so as your career aspirations evolve, the district supports you in that because we want, to, uh, want you to realize those aspirations as well. And then finally, the most important thing is you get to work with wonderful students and families every day. Uh, anybody who currently works in a school or aspires to knows that that's the reason why everyone does it. it. It's not about the money or the benefits, but it's about the impact that you make on students' lives and the opportunity to do something meaningful every day. Okay. Right. So I'm going to introduce my colleague, Autumn Moore, who's a human resources specialist, to talk about the application process. So one of the big things that you guys are probably wondering is once I actually have the requirements, what do I do next? So to apply to LUSD, this is the basic process. The same documents that you're mentioning, you're going to include in your application online. Um, so be your transcripts, your proof of basic skills, a resume. Um, also, if you have any references, we just ask for contact information for them, not an official letter. So that's your starting point. So once we receive it, we review it based on our needs, um, see if you have the courses that we need as well for that provisional teaching. Um, and if so, we select you for an interview, which is that middle step. So the interview for provisional teacher, um, it's a Q&A that all of you are used to, but also we do a sample lesson of your choosing. 
and we do a writing prompt online. So three components. If you're successful in it and we feel we're able to move you on to next steps, you are officially eligible to be selected as a school site for principal to find out are you the fit for their school and your next steps for being employed in math or science classroom. So your main website, since LAUSD is a pretty large district, your main starting point to apply for provisional teacher or substitute or university intern is going to be teachinla.com. So I know you all have it in your packets, but just in case you need it for a moment, that's still there for you. Um, like I was mentioning, the necessary documents that are there, we definitely encourage you to include them if you have them. If you don't, you're still able to apply and just add them later. Um, what I would also recommend is if any of you have already started the process, you've already considered it, you may have started a substitute application or considered a provisional before and you may not have access to your application anymore, please reach out to us. This is our contact and we can help you start a new password, get back in, and continue with the application or if you just had general questions. Um, so I'm gonna let our IHG partners continue on um, but that's the basic application and we hope you guys can all apply whatever stage you're at. Okay, and before we move forward, if anyone didn't have an opportunity to sign in, when we're done, uh, please go ahead and sign in because what we wanna do is we're gonna send everyone some electronic documents after this so that way you have them available in your email. Um, and we just wanted to go over some of our partners here, our teacher preparation program partners that we work with very closely. And this is generally where we look to get the supply that Dr. Johnson was referencing earlier. So um, represented here today, I know we have uh, Cal State Northridge, we have Loyola Marymount University, we have the Los Angeles County Office of Education, and we have our own uh, LUSD district intern program. And then we'll also be providing you some electronic materials from the other uh, universities that are posted up here as well. And the nice thing about working with this many universities is that regardless of where you live, there's probably a university that we work with that's relatively close to you. Uh, and so if you're looking to earn your credential at any of those places, they are close partners of ours. Okay, so after we take a few questions, what we're gonna do is we are gonna move over into the library where we're gonna have some of our partners with tables where you'll be able to get some materials and uh, ask any questions. And then we have members of our staff here that are able to answer any questions that you might have individually. So did you wanna do open forum q and all right, so just for the benefit of everyone, uh, we'll, we'll do spend a few minutes answering some questions in an open forum so that way everyone can hear the responses. What questions might you all have? Yes, absolutely. His question was, does he have to have a math or science bachelor's to teach math or science? And the answer is no. And so what you would do is once you pass that C set to show that you're competent in that area, that would be your next step to move forward. So I hand over here. Yes, sir. Yes, if you don't have any full-time teaching experience, you would start in that first column. Correct. Yeah, his question was, uh, if you start as an intern, you do start on what's called the L table uh, for teachers with alternative certification. And then once you earn that preliminary credential, you would move to the T table. I'm sorry? Every single teacher needs to meet the basic skills requirement, either via CBEST or another route. So VIC is another test. Either CBEST or through your SAT scores or AP exam scores, but in general, that requirement is a baseline for all teachers. Here and then here. So if you're an intern, you're limited to having an intern credential for three years. And so within those three years, you would have to, to pass it. 
But the nice thing is that in most of these programs, you're with a cohort of other students who are taking the same classes at the same time. And so as long as you're meeting the requirements, generally you're gonna finish within uh, two years. So that was a question about placement. So how do you know where you're going to get a job? And so the way that our process works is that if you meet the minimum requirements and you're successful in the HR pre-employment evaluation, we place you on an eligibility list. And then once you're in that pool, you're able to interview with schools that have a vacancy. And if you like the school and they like you, then you would be hired and assigned to that school. Just taking the temperature of the room, by show of hands, who already has a bachelor's degree? Look at that, that's amazing. Um, keep your hand up if you think you've met the subject matter requirements, either through CSET or through a waiver program. Okay, good enough, all right. Yes, ma'am. So a subject matter waiver is usually given uh, from a Cal State University and they'll have, you would have to go to the individual university. Um, but most often, if you had a major in that area, you may qualify. So if you wanna come chat with me after that, we can talk a little more in depth. So, so all, the question is, what is alternative certification? An alternative certification is when you are going to be, uh, instead of student teaching, you're gonna be teaching as a teacher of record while you're completing the credentialing program as a university or district intern. Mm -hmm. Or as a provisionally licensed teacher. Yes, the question is, do you have to go through one of those universities? And the, the answer is no. If you end up earning a California credential, uh, you're able to apply regardless. If you earn a credential in another state, you're able to apply and we can look at reciprocity. The only limitation is you can only be a university intern with one of our partners. And so you would wanna check with us first to make sure that we have an agreement with that university before moving forward. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so the question was, do you need to be a student of the university in order to be in their intern program? And so every university has different requirements about how you're admitted, and so you would want to check with those individual universities about how you could be admitted. But generally, you have to be a member or a student of the university to be in their program. It could, it's really, it's, it's up to you. You could either go through the traditional method with student teaching or you could be an intern. We're hiring both right now. We do, uh, we do offer subject matter preparation for the CSET, it is, it is limited um, and we do have that on our HR website. Um, and if you'd like a direct link, I'll give you my card after and, and I'd be happy to send that to you. Yeah, we have to double check on that. The question was about vouchers. Um, we currently don't offer that for the CSET exam itself, but I believe that we offer some preparation courses that you can be reimbursed for if you are a current employee of the district as a substitute or a provisionally licensed teacher. So it's offered We do have a limited uh, slate of course offerings, yeah. And the reason why I say limited is in the past we used to offer 
each session multiple times, but now you'll see that, for example, mathematics subtest one, it might only be offered once a semester. We don't offer it in science. We only offer it in multiple subjects, so for elementary teachers and in mathematics for the uh, issues that Doug raised. But we would be happy to direct you to some online resources that we're familiar with for test preparation in some other areas. Just a really quick question also in the room. Um, Suman here is an LAUSD classified So depending on what job class you're in, our career ladder program is a fantastic program for current employees who want to become teachers. And in some cases, if you qualify and you're able to be admitted into that program, you could qualify for tuition reimbursement. That would take you up to the point where you become a teacher of record. You could also qualify for reimbursement for CBEST and CSET examinations. And I know that, where is Patty Camacho? Where did Patty Camacho go? Patty Camacho is right there. That's Ms. Patty Camacho, she is one of our wonderful career ladder specialists. So if you are a current LEOC classified employee and you're interested in learning more about career ladder, Patty's your gal. Um, but I recently, I went to the meeting, but did they just offer for a special English uh, uh, teacher and... Bilingual. Bilingual. Yeah, bilingual, yeah. not for the math. We, we have a very, well, we're waiting for the goose quote, but that's limited. But we also might be possibly in the future. So, and, and one other thing uh, before we finish up with the whole group, I also wanted to let anybody know who's interested in substitute teaching, the district has a great need for substitute teachers. And so if you have a bachelor's degree and uh, the CBES or basic skills, we would encourage you to apply because that's a great way to get to know different schools, different students, see if it's something that you're really interested in doing before you make the financial investment and time commitment into getting a credential. Yes. What do you have? Um, oh, yes. Yes. Um, so what I'd like to do now is I'm going to point out some members of our staff and, and um, that you can ask some individual questions. If you see any of us around, we have Patty Camacho here, who's a talent acquisition specialist. Um, Mackie Las Marias is a talent acquisition specialist. Donald Bolt, human resources specialist. He's about to leave, though. And uh, Edward, I don't want to butcher it, but Edward is over here. He's a uh, human resources specialist. And then Craig Yokoi, talent acquisition specialist. And then we have Yvette Beltran and Lisa Michnik, who are also talent acquisition specialists. So you have a number of folks who are here who will be able to answer any individual questions that you might have. What we'd like to invite you to do now is uh, please come on into the library. So that way you can meet with some of our partners and please remember, if you did not sign in, please remember to sign in. Thank you so much for coming today. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to helping you on your journey to becoming a math or science teacher. <laughs>